This is a pretty sophisticated setup that we have here for cutting gears. This is a matter of interest. I don't know if you want to record it. But we have one of the smallest, if not the smallest, CNC uh, indexing units. CNC being computer numeric design and uh, control, I should say, CNC computer numeric control. And that we can dial in. Can you start that again? You want me to be speaking? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we have a, th this is a, a hybrid milling machine. It's a, it's a hardinge horizontal with a bridge port vertical head modified to, to, to do vertical work for gear cutting. And uh, we have a lot of control because we have a CNC unit, a computer numeric control uh, computer here that we just dial in the number of teeth that we want to have cut and they and then we just operate the machine and then they press a button and they and we unplug the machine <laughs> for your, <laughs> for your Um, yeah, actually, it's more effective from around here, but you can probably see it move from here anyway. Um, in order to, um, first of all, to, to cut a, a wheel or a new gear, we have to determine the number of teeth required. And so that has to be determined in conjunction with the other teeth that this wheel is going to mesh with. So we've determined that this is going to be a 48 tooth wheel. And we dial that into the CNC controller and it determines the uh, number of teeth that will be cut. And once the machine has made a pass, cut of tooth or the separation between the tooth we dial in the next and this little stepper motor that, uh, moves the whole rig around until it comes to the next tooth that has to be cut and so on until the whole wheel has gone around the full revolution and we have 48 teeth cut in the, uh, the wheel and having gone through all that, this is the finished wheel complete with its boss and ready to be mounted on the clock. This actually is part of a calendar mechanism that tells the day of the week. And it had been removed from the clock by somebody before because he didn't know what it was for or it was jamming the clock up. So we're restoring it to its normal and complete function. Nice new wheel all polished. Eventually will tarnish down and look as though it belonged to the clock for 200 years. Can you tell me that because some of the parts of these clocks that you get in for repair are so badly damaged that you actually have to remake the part? Is that a fair statement? Yeah, a lot of the clocks that come into us have been, have had parts removed for one reason or another and uh, the clock is no longer complete, although it may still run, but some of its other functions, such as the strike mechanism or the calendar mechanism, won't work. So our job is to bring it back to the condition that it was in when it was first made. And to that end, we make any parts that we need. For example, on the big South Main lathe, we do turning of major parts. We have a Derbyshire uh, Model A instrument lathe. And of course, we have several watchmakers' lathes and other pieces like that, but we are equipped to make anything necessary. Sometimes the parts are damaged just for, uh, from just plain wear and tear, and they have to be replaced. Or in many cases, we're able to repair them. 
sometimes we don't make a whole tooth. If, if, if just several teeth are broken, we can insert new teeth and cut them to match the original teeth on the wheel. And tell me again, why do you make the parts as opposed to buying parts? Well, we, we have to be fully equipped to be able to make any part for any clock because you can't buy spare parts for a 300-year-old clock. The, uh, well, first of all, the, they weren't mass produced, so you have to be, they have to be fabricated uh, individually to fit the quirks of that particular maker or the, the design of that particular clock. Does that satisfy you? Okay, you can go ahead. To, uh, we've already put in the number of teeth that are going to be cut. 48 teeth. We're on the seventh tooth now. We're going to go to the next tooth and press next. And that takes us to tooth number eight. If we want to go back to clear, uh, to make sure that the teeth we did before, we can go back uh, to the previous number. It takes us back to seven. Or just continue going on eight, nine, ten, eleven, and on until we've cut all 48 teeth. A brilliant machine made by, uh, uh, designed by a man by the name of Brian Mumford, who calls himself the crackpot inventor. He's in, he's in California, and he worked with the Sherline Company to produce this whole thing. In, and th this is the controller, and that's the stepper motor that controls the. Um... Okay, I lost that. So that's the stepper motor that's controlled by the controller and that's what can be moved manually but in this case wherever we're making teeth we it has to be done accurately so it has to be locked in position to each, for each cut. And that's the way it progresses until we've cut all the teeth. Enough? Well, you can see that this is a pinion that we've, we've already cut. 